a drug resistant fungus is spreading through out some healthcare facilities in the U.S. at a quote alarming rate. This, according to the CDC, it's called Candida auris or C auris, and it could be bad for people with hospitalized patients with health issues. For more on what this fungus is, should people worry about it, we're going to be joined right now by Washington Post health reporter Bennett Nirapil. Thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. First off, what do we know about this and, and what can you tell us about this fungus that, that people really need to know? Yeah, so Cioris is a fungus that's been identified in health facilities across the U.S. since 2016. So essentially what you need to know about it is that this is a fungus that can be really uh, deadly for the most ve medically vulnerable people. Uh, it spreads primarily in long-term care centers, in nursing uh, home facilities. It's not something that people like you and I really have to worry about contracting because we're exposed to different fungi and bacteria all the time. The problem is when you're in a place like a healthcare a center where people are on ventilators, uh, where people are on uh, central um, lines, they're more susceptible to these kind of infections. And th their immune systems aren't as strong either, which means that the kind of uh, bacteria or fungi that we would just uh, fight off, they can't fight it off as much. And if it gets into their bloodstream, the fatality rate is very high. Definitely. It is a very certainly something for concern, especially when the CDC comes out, says it's raising at a, quote, alarming rate. They also called it a serious global health risk. When you hear those words coming from the CDC, especially just coming off this COVID-19 pandemic, I think a lot of people's ears perk up. What are the numbers? Maybe what are they telling us when they say something like this, the CDC? Right. Well, first, I would just say as someone who covered coronavirus, sometimes in the aftermath of coronavirus, we want to compare everything yeah. uh, to yeah. coronavirus. But you can have a global public health threat, even if it's a fairly small number of cases. So the number of infections have tripled from about 476 in 2019 to nearly 1500 in 2021. And it's likely gone up since then. So it's not necessarily a huge number of cases. But the reason that it's really worrisome is because this is resistant to drugs. Um, there are still some antifungals that still work against this, but if it continues growing, we might see a continuation of uh, drug-resistant strains. And it's, again, the kind of thing that really affects the most medically vulnerable people among us. So that's the reason that it's a cause for concern here. And it's the call for action here is that hospitals and other health facilities have to do a better job of deep cleaning and surveillance to uh, protect their weakest patients. Definitely. And you say drug resistant. What do you kind of mean by that? And maybe what does that entail in, in the medical uh, field? Right. So there are three different types of antifungal drugs uh, that can be used against the auris. So uh, the strains that we're seeing, one, one particular class of drug doesn't work against almost any of them. There is still one class of drug that does work against uh, this strain, but they are concerned because they're seeing a small but growing number of cases that do resist that drug. So the idea here is that um, if you have uh, strains that are drug resistant, it's gonna be harder to treat and it's gonna be harder to save someone's life. And when we talk about this, because obviously the CDC calling it what it is, alarming rate, uh, it's been around for several years. This isn't necessarily new. It's not like it just came back in 2019, like we're talking about with COVID-19. It's been around for a while. Does that help or does that maybe hurt doctors and in, in how they, they kind of approach this? So, I mean, this is familiar. It's not like a, it's not like a completely brand new uh, threat like COVID-19 was back in, uh, back in 2020. Um, so, Doctors do have the tools to identify it and to treat and to treat it and to prevent it. It's just really an issue of education at this point. There's a lot of public health threats out there, and it's difficult for healthcare uh, facilities and physicians to stay on top of them all. So when the CDC is declaring something of serious public health threat and telling uh, health providers to be on alert, it's a way. Of, it's a way of saying that hey, this should be among the things that you're looking out for. Definitely, and uh, obviously we want to make sure people stay healthy. And, and like you said, the most vulnerable, potentially the most susceptible to something like CRS uh, as well. For healthy people, kind of what is the worry level for them and, and people just kind of around? Is, is that not a worry at all, you think? I mean, 
the reason that we see this in health facilities is because it's prime for spread because you have so many very sick people there without the immune systems to fight this off. So we don't necessarily need to worry about this like we are worried about it with coronavirus just going on public transportation or going to concerts and weddings. Um, the best thing that you can do as an otherwise healthy person is just make sure that you're washing your hands when you're going to hospitals and when you're going uh, to nursing homes and things like that. Proper hand hygiene, like as simple as it's as simple as it is, that it really is one of the best tools against this. And the rest of it is really on uh, the healthcare system to make sure that we have the surveillance and we have the deep cleaning needed to keep this uh, fungus at bay. Yeah, and hospitals can sometimes be that petri dish. Certainly, of different uh, things going on. Uh, what are the what are the symptoms of CRS? And, and maybe if a potential person, a healthy person, probably less likely, but uh, somebody that might be vulnerable, uh, what kind of symptoms does CRS kind of present initially? It's it's really difficult to suss out because the people who are getting it are often really sick, and it's also hard to identify if someone is dying for the same reason. Uh, that said, one of the big symptoms they look out for is a fever that won't let up, um, and this can cause infections in uh, the bloodstream and also infect the heart, lung, brain, uh, brain, and other parts of the body. So it's really the big thing that they look about, out for is whether people are testing positive uh, for it when and whether they've had exposures to other facilities where this uh, fungus has been circulating. Definitely. Uh, the CDC called it, quote, raising at an alarming rate, but people uh, shouldn't be too alarmed by it. Thank you so much for joining us here, Washington Post health reporter Bennett Nirapil. Uh, any parting words you want to leave with our audience about this or, or any other thing you can come to your mind? I'll just say this is just one of um, several uh, ways that people can get infected within the healthcare settings. Like it's not just Cioris. There's a lot of different bacteria out there. And this is a result of the fact, and experts tell me that this is a result of the fact that we really don't put in enough emphasis on infection control in healthcare. And because the rise of antibiotics um, is also leading to a rise in these kind of uh, bacteria and fungi that resist a uh, traditional treatment. So it is a broader public health issue that goes beyond this particular fungus.